In today's talk, I, I focused on some of the advances um, that have uh, come about in the field of immune-related toxicity in the last number of years. The first is that there's been a number of published guidelines um, to assist clinicians and really any type of oncology provider in their ability to diagnose and identify an immune-related immune side effect. Uh, these include the ESMO guidelines, the SITSI guidelines, and more recently, um, a collaboration between ASCO, the American Society of Clinical Oncology and NCCN, the National Cancer Control Network, so the joint ASCO NCCN guidelines. Um, from there, I focused much of my talk on pneumonitis because this is the, the side effect that most plagues lung cancer patients because it can be difficult to discern between pneumonitis, uh, which is defined as a focal or diffuse inflammation of the lung parenchyma, or pneumonia, or progression of a patient's lung cancer. So we talked a little bit about what the uh, the recommendations are, um, how these have changed um, over the years. Uh, it's widely accepted now that patients need a high resolution CT scan. Um, however, they can have a chest X-ray initially to start out with, um, according to the recently published guidelines. In patients who are symptomatic, uh, it is encouraged to consider a bronchoscopy with or without a lung biopsy in order to truly discern if somebody has pneumonitis or not. And in some instances where it is difficult to, to discern between either of these, patients may be treated with corticosteroids as well as empiric antibiotics. Um, but we would hope that with time, some of these algorithms may be further refined. Um, from there, we also touched a little bit on colitis. Um, this hasn't been something that we have seen a lot in the lung cancer field, but now that we've been giving the combination of nivolumab and ipilimumab for small cell lung cancer, ipilimumab is associated with colitis, um, and we are starting to see that now as a toxicity, particularly when giving the combination. And we talked a little bit about uh, the fact that this can sometimes be a steroid refractory uh, clinical event, and that patients may respond respond to infliximab and that there may even be newer immunosuppressants such as uh, the agent vedolizumab that has been described in a couple of case studies and is included in the guideline.